students this is rajika and uh, this is the second session of uh, ray optics and optical instruments chapter so in the previous session in the last session we had uh, discussed about uh, reflection the phenomena of reflection then we had discussed about the laws of reflection one law says i is equal to r that is angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and another law says the incident ray normal and the reflected ray all lie on a same plane then the next thing which we had discussed in the previous session was types of spherical mirrors so there are two types of spherical mirrors concave mirror and convex mirror the spherical surface a concave mirror is a part of the spherical surface or spherical hollow spherical sphere where outer surface is coated and the convex is inner surface will be coated then the next thing which we had discussed was few basic definitions like the definition of pole which is represented by p definition of focal length which is represented by small f definition of principal focus which is represented by capital f then the radius of curvature center of curvature and we had also discussed about the definition of image so what is this image image is a point where all the reflected rays meet or appear to meet so students in today's session we will be discussing about types of images so basically there are two types of images one is a real image another one is virtual image now let's discuss about this real image and virtual image one by one so let's discuss about the real images first as you can see in the ray diagram the yellow arrow mark represents the object okay and there are two incident rays which are emitting from the object so as you can see there is a parallel ray parallel means it is parallel to the principal axis so it is striking the concave mirror and look at the ray diagram after reflection as i had told you in the previous session it cuts the principal axis at a particular point and that point is called as principal focus so as you can see a straight line which is passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection passes through the focus then another line as you can see a ray which is passing through the focus so the incident rays which passes through the focus after reflection they pass parallel to the principal axis as we already have learned in the previous session that images form when the reflected rays meet at a common point so if you observe the ray diagram these two reflected rays are meeting at a particular point that gives rise to an image and this image is real image so the definition of the real image is if rays originating from a point actually meet at another point after reflection or refraction that point will be called as the real image so this was about the real image now let's discuss about the virtual images okay so as you can see in the ray diagram again there is one object 
placed but this time the image is uh, the sorry the mirror is a convex mirror so what's the meaning of convex mirror as you can see the coating is made on the outer uh, sorry inner surface so here the outer surface will be reflecting surface in case of concave mirror inner surface will be reflecting surface here in case of convex mirror outer surface will be the reflecting surface so this convex mirror will be acting as a diverging mirror which means whatever light falls on this mirror it diverges okay so here also as you can see there are two rays one ray is passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection it diverges and what we need to do the divergent ray should be produced back to meet the principal focus next another ray as you can see in the diagram is a ray which is incident at the pole so after reflection it creates the same amount of angle but goes below the principal axis so here as you can see the reflected rays are not actually meeting so i had told you what is the term used to represent something which does not meet actually we have to say appears to meet so the definition of the virtual images is if rays originating from a point do not actually meet at another point after reflection but they appear to meet when produced behind the mirror are called as the point is called as the virtual image fine so this was about the real image and the virtual images okay now let's discuss about the differences between real image and virtual image okay so the first difference is in case of real image the images due to the reflection or refraction when the light arises from an object and converges to a certain point okay and the difference in virtual images the image produced when the light arising from an object appears to strike a certain point okay so this was the first difference the second difference is the real images can be captured on the screens fine they can be captured on screens whereas the virtual images you cannot capture on the screen okay the virtual images cannot be captured on the screen as you know the virtual images are formed behind the mirror so since the images are formed behind the mirror you cannot capture them on the screens the next difference is real images are inverted whereas the virtual images are erect the real images are inverted and the in uh, vir uh, virtual images are erect next how do we produce these images the real images are produced with the help of concave mirror and the virtual images are produced with the help of convex mirror or plane mirror fine so this is about the differences between real image and virtual image okay
next the most important thing in the ray optics is cartesian sign conventions okay so cartesian is a name of scientist who proposed these sign conventions like we are just going to assign some signs negative and positive in different situations okay so cartesian was the one who assigned these conventions so what sign should be applied to the distance in a particular cases was assigned by cartesian so the sign conventions are named over his name okay now let's discuss about these cartesian sign conventions remember this concept is very very important because we will apply these cartesian sign conventions in numericals as well as derivations okay the very important and the first point of cartesian sign convention is all the distances must be measured from the pole you already know what is the pole as you can look at the ray diagram this p point which is the center of the spherical reflecting surface is called as the pole so all the distances must be measured from the pole either you are if you are uh, taking the distance of object or image you must take it from the pole from pole to the object from pole to the image okay so this is about the very important point of the cartesian sign convention the next point in the cartesian sign convention is the distances measured along the direction of incident ray uh, have to be assign a positive sign or the distances measured along the direction of incident ray are positive and the distances measured opposite to the direction of incident ray must be taken as negative okay for example if the direction of incident ray is this and suppose object is somewhere here we have to measure the distance from pole so from pole you are coming this side fine so these two directions are considered to be opposite to each other and you have to assign negative sign for the distance of object there okay all the distances must all the distances along the direction of incident ray are taken as positive and opposite to the direction of incident ray must be taken as negative okay next point in the cartesian sign convention is suppose if the object is placed above the principal axis and you are measuring the height of the object so as you can look at the diagram this ap represents the object okay so we are measuring the distance above the principal axis or the height is measured upwards and perpendicular to the principal axis in that case it is taken as positive and in the ray diagram this a dash b dash represents the image so this image is inverted image so here the image is below the principal axis so in this case the sign which has to be assigned is negative so the heights measured upward and perpendicular to the principal axis are taken as positive and the heights measured downwards are taken as negative okay 
So the Cartesian sign convention says all the distances must be measured from the pole and the measurements made along the direction of incident ray must be taken as positive. Opposite to the direction of incident ray must be taken as negative. And the heights measured above the principal axis are positive. Heights measured below the principal axis are negative. Let's discuss about the relationship between F and R, which means radius of curvature of a mirror and focal length of a mirror. Okay, this question will be asked for three marks. The question will be asked like obtain the relationship between focal length and radius of curvature of a mirror. Okay, so as you can look at the ray diagram, we have used one concave mirror. Okay, which means the outer surface of the sphere, spherical surface is coated and in the side is reflecting okay and a ray is incident on the point m and that ray is parallel to the principal axis okay you need to write the consideration very important remember as you can see one incident ray meets the mirror at a point m and after reflection, it passes through the focus. Okay. So, here before we write the reflected ray, we need to write the normal. Okay. For spherical mirrors, the normal is drawn from the point of incidence to the center of curvature. If you draw a straight line from the center of curvature to the point of incidence that gives you the normal. Okay. And you know the angle between the normal and incident ray is called as angle of incidence. And in the diagram we have represented it by theta. Okay. That is angle of incidence. And after reflection it is passing through F which means the angle between reflected ray and normal is again theta because we know from the law of reflection I is equal to R. Okay. Next one as you can see there is a perpendicular and the point is called as D. Alright. From M we have drawn a perpendicular we have drawn a straight line which meets the principal axis at D. Fine. So, as you can look at the ray diagram, there are two right angle triangles. One is MCD, another one is MFD. Okay. And the angle C will be theta because the alternate angles. And angle F will be 2 theta. Again the same reason that is they are alternate angles. Alright. So from the first law of reflection we know angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So that is equal to theta. Next from the triangles C, M, D we have to define tan theta. As you know, tan theta is equal to opposite side divided by adjacent side. So, MD by CD is equal to tan theta. And from the triangle MFD, tan 2 theta is equal to MD divided by FD. Here we will consider the angles which we are able to see on the ray diagram are very very small. So if the angles in the trigonometric functions are very small, we ignore the trigonometric function and we will just write the angle. That is uh, uh, if tan theta is equal to md by cd 
and in that equation if theta is very small we will write it as theta is equal to md by cd and 2 theta is equal to md by fd okay and since this d is very close to p the point d is very close to the point p so what we are going to do we will place cd is equal to cp and fd is equal to ft so you can write theta is equal to md by cp there you need to observe in place of cd we have written cp if you rearrange that equation you will get md is equal to cp theta call that equation as equation number 1 next 2 theta is equal to md by f d there also in place of d we will place p which gives 2 theta is equal to md by f p if you rearrange this equation it will give md is equal to f p 2 theta okay call this as equation number 2 fine now from equation number 1 and 2 you can see okay from the equation numbers 1 and 2 we are going to solve these two equations okay if you observe equations 1 and 2 left hand sides are equal if the left hand sides are equal what can be done we can equate the right hand sides so we will get cp theta is equal to fp 2 theta okay so cp is equal to fp 2 theta 2 uh, we have cancelled theta here since cp theta is equal to fp 2 theta theta and theta goes off and you will have cp is equal to fp2 as you can look at the ray diagram the cp is actually center of uh, radius of curvature represented by capital r and fp is the focal length represented by small f so we can place fp is equal to small f and cp is equal to capital r in equation number 3 so you will get r is equal to f2 and if you rearrange it you will get f is equal to r by 2 so this is the relationship between focal length of a mirror and radius of curvature of a mirror okay as you can look at the equation focal length is equal to the half of the radius of curvature okay as i said this derivation will be asked for 3 marks passing through the focus after reflection passes 
parallel to the principal axis. Okay, if the first ray passes parallel to the principal axis after reflection cuts the principal focus means if the incident ray itself is passing through the uh, fo principal focus after reflection it passes parallel to the principal axis. So as I had already told out of four only two are enough to draw the image as you can see here in the third diagram, we are able to draw the image because there the reflected rays are meeting at a point. Okay. The next ray which you can use to draw the image is a ray passing through the center of curvature. So, this ray after reflection will pass from the center of curvature again which means this will retrace the same path. The fourth ray is a ray incident at the pole. After reflection, it will create the same angle but below the principal axis. Okay, so there are four rays which are used to draw the image. One ray passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection passes through the focus, second ray, a ray passing through the focus after reflection passes parallel to the principal axis, third ray, a ray passing through the center of curvature after reflection retraces the same path and the fourth ray is a ray incident on the pole after reflection, it creates the same amount of angle but below the principal axis, okay. So, these are the rays. Out of these rays, you can use any two rays. Now, let's see where the images will be formed. In case of concave and convex mirror, when you place the object at particular points. Okay. This is also very important as it will be asked in entrance exams as well as one mark questions. Okay. As you can look at the ray diagrams, first case is representing the case of a concave mirror where the object is placed at focus. The image in this case will be formed at infinity. And the nature of image will be real, highly enlarged and inverted. Okay, if the object is placed at focus, in case of concave mirror, the image will be formed at infinity. The nature of image will be highly enlarged, real and inverted. The second image shows if the object is placed between F and P which means focal uh, focus and pole. In this case, the image which you get will be virtual because the image will be formed behind the mirror. Okay. And here the nature of image will be enlarged, virtual and erect. Fine. So here, this is a case of concave mirror where the object is placed between F and P. The nature of image is virtual, enlarged and erect since it is formed behind the mirror. Now the third image shows a case of convex mirror where the object is placed at infinity. The image will be obtained at focus. But as we already know, convex mirrors produces virtual images. Which means here, if you keep the object at infinity, the image will be formed behind the mirror. Okay. And the nature of image will be highly diminished, which means very small, virtual and erect. In the fourth diagram, you can see, the object is placed between infinity and pole of a convex mirror. So,
so in this case the image will be obtained once again behind the mirror and the nature of image will be diminished virtual and erect so in this set of the ray diagrams all the ray diagrams have concave mirrors all right all the cases are of concave mirrors so in the first ray diagram the object is placed at infinity the image is formed at the focus and the nature is nature of images the image produced will be highly diminished real and inverted highly diminished means very very small the second ray diagram represents the case where the object is placed beyond the center of curvature beyond c in this case the image will be formed between c and f and the nature is diminished real and inverted the third ray diagram represents the case of the object placed at the center of curvature and the image will also be formed at the center of curvature since the image is produced at the same point the size of the object will be size of the image will be same as that of the size of object okay and it will be real and inverted the fourth ray diagram represents the case where the object is placed between c and f okay center of curvature and principal focus in this case the image will be formed beyond center of curvature and the nature of image will be enlarged real and inverted okay so these are all the possible cases of where you can place the object and what will be the position of image and what will be the nature of images produced distances are measured from the pole the distances measured along the direction of incident ray are taken as positive against the direction of incident ray are taken as negative and the distances or the measurements made above the principal axis are positive and the measurements made below the principal axis are negative okay the next thing which we discussed was the relationship between f and r focal length and radius of curvature as i said it will be asked for 3 marks okay and the last thing which we discussed about was images formed by mirrors concave mirror convex mirror which means where if you place an object at a particular place where the images will be produced and what will be the nature of images okay so this was all for today's session so in the next session we will be discussing about 
the mirror equation okay so keep studying stay at home stay safe thank you